what is the commission's flavor for a, a lunch break or move on and maybe do a lunch break after the uh, project updates I don't know how long how long do you think those would take just a couple minutes yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes. Okay. I'd like to continue. All right. We'll move on with the uh, item number 12A, reports, informational department activity report, Secretary Tony Wasley. Director Wasley will provide a report on recent department activities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear us in Reno? All right, thank you. Uh, I'll run through a uh, brief highlight of various activities by division, starting with the uh, director's office. Um, I already announced that we held interviews for the new conservation education division administrator and selected Chris Basie. One thing I failed to uh, <coughs> announce was that uh, Kim Jolly has also uh, left the department and taking a position uh, with the city of Reno. So we're currently uh, recruiting uh, for her replacement and hopeful that we'll have that position filled uh, by early November. It's an important position to the agency as it's a, the department's legislative liaison. So with the upcoming session, we we'll want to make sure that we have that position filled. And uh, that position is also staffed to the administrative regulations and procedure committee. Uh, legislation commission the legislative commission uh, held a meeting uh, department staff attended and the following regulations were approved the uh, unmanned aerial vehicle the drone regulation CGR 459 the industrial artificial pond permit the issuing and verifying whole numbers of vessels and then the spike elk definition so all those went through the legislative commission uh, this week, earlier this week, I attended the Debbie Smith Memorial Trap Shoot, uh, sponsored by the Congressional Sportsman Foundation and attended by some of the uh, uh, the, the uh, Sportsman's Caucus of the Nevada Legislature as well. Uh, also this week, we presented our agency budget request. Uh, Deputy Director Rob and O'Brien and myself uh, gave a presentation to the Governor's Budget Office. Um, we had an hour presentation uh, and we presented that to uh, 10 individuals and, and got positive feedback from that. A quick update on sage grouse. Um, staff specialist Sean Espinoza, Espinoza gave you a little update on our, our numbers. We, we did see an, a little uptick, 19% in male attendance this year. Um, there continues to be ongoing dialogue. The, the Department of Interior, in particular BLM, is developing a uh, slew of alternatives for the, the mineral segregation. Um, as you know, the Department of Interior set aside uh, roughly 3.2 million acres in a sagebrush focal area. The Secretary of Interior uh, put forward a recommendation that that sagebrush focal area be withdrawn from from mineral um, extraction. Uh, it would not pertain to valid and existing claims. And so that decision needs to undergo a full NEPA analysis. And so the alternatives for that NEPA analysis are, are currently being developed. And the state of Nevada uh, has developed uh, an alternative that, that we are hopeful uh, will be recognized as a preferred alternative through that process. The Operations Division, the auditors of the Legislative Council Bureau recently completed an audit of the Department's Information Technology Program focusing on state mandated information security compliance. Four audit exceptions were identified of which two have already been corrected and the remaining two will be corrected in the near future. During one of the out briefs, the lead auditor indicated this was one of the best audits he had conducted, uh, telling our Chief, information, uh, Chief of Information Technology quote, you guys run a tight operation. In the game division, uh, professional, professional meetings were attended. The game division sent four personnel to the 27th Biennial Western States and Provinces Pronghorn Workshop in Fairmont, Montana during August 29th through September 1st. Two days of papers on biology and ecology of pronghorn and sagebrush ecosystems were presented and a full 
day field tour covered a long distance pronghorn migration corridor and the obstacles and migration features these pronghorn encounter along the way. Montana hosted an excellent workshop. Nevada will be hosting at least two uh, Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agency sanctioned professional meetings in the next few years. The 28th Biennial Western States and Provinces Pronghorn Workshop will be hosted in the summer and fall of 2018 and the Desert Bighorn Council meetings will be hosted in April of 2019. Planning is already underway. A couple personnel changes. Uh, the Game Division, Mike Podborny, the Eureka Game Division uh, Area Biologist, retired on August 1st following a 31 and a half year career of dedicated service to the department. Mike's absence will be felt not only in the Eastern Region, but throughout the Game Division. The recruitment for the Eureka position closed on August 19th. Interviews followed in early September. Clint Garrett, a tenured department employee from within the Habitat Division, has been selected to fill the vacancy. Uh, due to an oversight during the Nevada and Utah elk season setting processes, Nevada and Utah initially ended up with a different with different season dates for the interstate antlered elk rifle hunt on Pilot Peak Unit 091. Utah and Nevada both corrected the discrepancy with Utah acting after this commission. Uh, Nevada added a week to the end of the season to conform with Utah's closure while Utah added a week to the beginning of the season uh, so that it would coincide with Nevada's opening. So that'll allow hunters from both states to hunt during September 10th to the, through October 7th season. Although a result of an inadvertent error, the reaction demonstrates excellent working relationships between both departments and commissions. Moose observations are becoming relatively commonplace in Northeast Nevada. Within areas 7 and 8 alone, there have been 25 individual sightings that include bulls, cows, and calves since 2010. The Game Division is working with the Conservation Education Division to get the word out so hunters are aware that moose are in the area. Moose are recognized as a game animal, but there are no current seasons in Nevada. Beginning on August 18th, the Eisenhood fire burned an additional 6,600 acres of mule deer winter range on the south end of the Eisenhoods. The fire burned one of the last remaining sagebrush pockets in that area. It was hoped that some of the deer moving into the previously burned Eisenhood Basin area might make their way south to this area during the upcoming winter but this latest fire has ensured that that will not be an option for that deer herd. Beginning on August 8th, the Overland fire burned about 7,700 acres of PJ, sagebrush, and grass in mule deer, elk, and pronghorn habitat in Unit 108 in the Bald Mountain area. Uh, fortunately, a large portion of the area that burned had previously been identified for a pinion juniper removal project, so this fire should prove more of a benefit in the long term. Mule deer hunters in select hunt units will be mailed letters asking them to provide teeth from their harvested deer. These efforts will be used to provide baseline age data in alternative management hunt units as identified in the new draft harvest management guidelines. Uh, Newmont Mining Company has proposed expanding the Long Canyon mining operations to include a pit expansion into the existing designated mule deer corridors. EIS for Bald Mountain Mine Expansion and the Record of Decision has been approved and signed. A monitoring plan for mule deer was signed into the EIS and a wildlife working group will be tasked with implementing the plan. Ken Ross Mining has donated $53,244 for the purchase of 18 GPS collars to monitor mule deer that migrate through the mine. Ken Ross also donated $24,000 for the disturbance of critical mule deer winter range to use as off-site mitigation for the Ruby Mountain deer herd. Initial reports from contractors and cooperators on progress completed on the FY16 Predator Management Plan have been submitted, and the division is on track for a complete report to the Commission on Predation Management Activities for the November meeting. From the Fisheries Division, over six years of effort, of uh, the department has finally acquired the two-acre Black Rock Station parcel in Railroad Valley. This property is a partial inholding adjacent to the Locks Ranch property acquired in 2005. It contains occupied critical habitat for the Endangered Species Act listed Railroad Valley springfish, and the acquisition is a major step towards recovery and delisting of the species. Funding was through the Question 1 bond and recovery lands acquisition grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Staff are finalizing an agreement with the Hawthorne Army Depot and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to allow transfer of Walker Basin Lahontan Cutthroat Trout to Cottonwood Creek near the town of Walker. 
to establish a, a refuge LCT population. Remaining native Walker Basin LCT, LCT populations in California are at very high risk because of drought conditions and small headwater streams. Fish transfers are expected by early October. Eastern region biologists recently collected four small northern pike from immediately below Bassett Lake. This appears to be an isolated incident, but efforts are ongoing to sample and survey all adjacent habitats to ensure additional pike are not present in the Bassett Lake system. Truckee Carson Irrigation District has relayed that the Bureau of Reclamation is requiring an eventual inspection and repair of the lower gates on the Lahontan Dam, which would require Lahontan Reservoir to be dropped to 1,000 acre feet. The timeline for the repair is still uncertain, but they will likely make a decision by the end of this irrigation season. Final draft of the renewal conservation agreement and strategy for relic leopard frog has been completed with finalization of that agreement expected by October. Uh, actually, we're hoping to do it as soon as uh, Monday or Tuesday. Also, staff has been working to finalize enrollment with the Southern Nevada Water Authority Springs Preserve under the programmatic CCA, the Candidate Conservation Agreement with Assurances, uh, kind of a safe, safe harbor agreement that uh, Vice Chairman Johnson referenced earlier. It's signed by uh, NDOW and the Fish and Wildlife Service last September. A listing decision on the relic leopard frog is expected uh, as early as the end of this month from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Aquatic Invasive Species Program staff continue to work with large fishing tournaments at Lake Mead to address potentially quagga-infested boats leaving the Colorado River system for other states and waters. 130 boats were inspected at the Juan Bass Tournament on September 15 with watercraft from as far away as Idaho, Georgia, and Minnesota. Only 28 boats, or 22 percent, were local watercraft from Southern Nevada. Boats that weren't fully decontaminated were inspected to be sure they were fully drained and plugs removed before leaving the marina. The Habitat Division, Endow staff met with members of Ducks Unlimited and the Nevada Waterfowl Association at the Fernley Wildlife Management Area in early September to look at potential wetland enhancement projects. During the tour, several topics were discussed, such as replacing rusted out water control structures and possible piping projects to enhance water conservation. Regional staff is working with BLM to address fire rehabilitation needs associated with the 2016 fires. We're currently waiting on the BLM to provide an indication of funding approval for these various emergency stabilization rehab plans. Once we have an indication of what the BLM will fund, NDOW can collaborate with uh, our partner NGOs concerning the need for additional monies to fund fire rehab needs on public, private, and state-owned property. Habitat staff continues to work on several large habitat enhancement projects in coordination with the BLM and the Forest Service. At present, contact crews are removing nearly 9,000 acres of Phase 1 and Phase 2 pinyon juniper on the south end of the Ruby Range associated with the Overland Pass Habitat Improvement Project. This project worked directly benefits sage grouse and mule deer, amongst other things. Mastication of Phase 1 and Phase 2 pinyon juniper work continues in an area of the Egan Range northwest of Ely to remove pinyon juniper around key sage grouse brooding <coughs> habitat. In all, over the last two years, working with the BLM and the Forest Service through the Nevada Partners in Conservation and Development, NDOW has facilitated the enhancement of over 20,000 acres for multiple species that include sage grouse and mule deer. Both the water development crews are finishing up a busy construction season. In total, there were eight new big game water developments built. 46 units were either rebuilt or had major maintenance actions performed and 386 units were inspected and had minor maintenance performed. In all, 13 units used extensive volunteer labor and support, which helps pay for a significant portion of the entire program. In the Law Enforcement Division, interviews for game warden candidates will be conducted this week and next week to fill vacancies in the southern region. Several game wardens participated in a concentrated patrol in units 061 and 071 on the Bruno River over, over the weekend. Uh, to monitor a cow elk hunt. There was a marked decrease in violations for that hunt over last year. The Operation Game Thief trailer was out and high profile patrols throughout the two hunt units occurred. Operation Game Thief report of a drone being used to scout elk was reported in the area at the time of the hunt. A uh, case is under investigation in the Winnemucca area where a subject spotlighting for coyotes mistakenly killed a doe mule deer stating that they thought it was a coyote. 
Western Region Game Warden completed a residency case investigation where two persons confessed. Southern Region Game Wardens are investigating five deer killed and left over a two week period near Wheeler Well on the Pahrump side of Mount Charleston. A bull elk was killed and the head taken uh, with the meat left to rot this last Thursday. The incident is under investigation. A few days prior, a deer was killed and left in the same general location. Uh, also, a mule deer was shot and left partially caped in Unit 241 and is also under investigation. Uh, a few highlights from the Conservation Education Division. Uh, we had a final review of our urban wildlife report. The staff completed and compiled an annual report of the department's urban wildlife activities. That was also provided to some members of the governor's uh, budget office uh, during that presentation earlier this week. Uh, since we did make a request to uh, secure some general funds for that during the last session, um, there was a request for a report and how those general fund dollars were spent in that effort. The publications uh, area of the Conservation Education Division Publications coordinator began work on the 2016-2017 fishing guide. Uh, a revamped Kirch management area brochure is at the printers, and the publications coordinator is proofing and working with the state uh, volunteer coordinator on notification letters for the 2017 Kirch award. The archery education area uh, secured $12,500 in funding for a National Archery in the Schools program from local groups for school equipment grants. At this point, we're in the process for bringing eight new schools on board by getting them trained and assisting them with equipment grants. We've expanded our advanced archery training classes and currently have seven introductory archery classes, three intermediate archery classes, and five bow hunter certifications scheduled. Eastern Region staff participated in the week-long Nevada Outdoorsman and Wheelchairs hunt at the Newmont ONTS Ranch. Eastern Region staff also held a native slam tour for the Ruby Mountain Fly Fishers, helping to provide information on where to go and what to use for members to complete their native fish slam. In the Southern Region, urban wildlife calls remain steady. Coyote-related calls continue to account for most of the calls. Staff has handled multiple media inquiries into reports of pets being eaten by coyotes. Program activities included assisting the public and providing educational presentations on living with wildlife and keeping wildlife wild. The Southern Region Urban Wildlife Coordinator received two reports of a mountain lion in the vicinity of Painted Desert Golf Course. The reports came in on July 11th and July 28th. An additional lion sighting was reported on June 29th at Kellogg Park. Southern Region Con Ed staff has been working on messaging for urban wildlife. The chosen tagline is keeping wildlife wild with five sub points. Consider their space, look, don't touch, check your pets, uh, never feed wildlife, and clean your space. Uh, see, the Southern Region Wildlife Education Coordinator conducted multiple interpretation programs about a variety of wildlife subjects at the following venues. Hemingway Park, Bighorn Sheep Interpretive Project, Clark County Wetlands Park, Lake Mead Allen Bible Visitor Center, Old Mormon Fort, and various park and recreational facilities. 412 people were contacted in all. Western Region Outdoor Education staff members are constantly looking to expand the Volunteer Instructor Corps. The number of outdoor education classes and seminars we are able to have is a direct reflection of the number of trained volunteer instructors. A monthly volunteer instructor training is held to certify new instructors in the Western Region. This month there will be trainings in Winnemucca and Reno. The real REEL -E recovery event that we start, started coordinating a couple years ago has is, is, uh, become a pretty special event. In mid-August we load up a bunch of fly fishing equipment and provide transportation for 10 to 15 wounded veterans and drive up to Hobart Reservoir. We provide a full still water fly fishing clinic and float tubes and kayaks. This event is a huge success every year because of the great volunteers and staff members that help. With the vision of building the base of Endow supporters, the Western Region Outdoor Education Quarter, Coordinator and volunteers will be staffing a hands-on booth at the 2016 <laughs> University of Nevada Reno Ag Field Day. There were over 600 participants at last year's event, which makes this event very worthwhile. We'll be using the outdoor education trailer and partnering with the Wildlife Society student chapter for the University of Nevada, Reno, Reno, and Kelly Stewart, who is a professor at UNR and teaches the wildlife ecology and management course. Uh, 
Uh, noteworthy programs also include the Galena Creek Campfire, where we presented to 200 people about bears. The crowd mostly consisted of families from Lincoln Park Elementary School in Sparks. The monthly program was also a great success with 100 people showing up to see what insects they could catch at Oxbow. Uh, we got to talk about host plants, habitats, food chains, and compare them to aquatic insects and fly fishing. We have two large volunteer days coming up at Oxbow. Uh, one just passed, September 21st. Stantec will be helping to clean up and prep a site for native planting. And tomorrow, with Keep Truckee Meadows beautiful volunteers, uh, weeds will be removed, old fencing, uh, protecting dead saplings, as well as some pruning will be improved. Then uh, upland plants brought from the state nursery will be planted to outcompete the weeds. Hopefully this will reduce the amount of weeds on this site in the future. Uh, Southern Region Wildlife Education Coordinator is also organizing an interpretive program at the Lake Mead Visitor Center. The focus will be on desert wildlife and desert adaptations. Uh, lastly, a couple points from the Diversity Division. The Diversity Division held the annual bat blitz in and around the High Rock Wilderness area. Uh, second week of August, we had over 35 individuals survey for bats over the course of four nights at a total of 16 different sites. We had 13 organizations and agencies in addition to diversity help with the effort and captured at least 11 different species of bats, including the canyon bat that was not expected to be at this area. It was a terrific turnout and we got great results in an area that has had almost zero survey effort for bats. Some sites produced more than 100 captures a night. The wilderness sites were especially interesting as they had great, greater overall diversity of species and represented greater numbers of captures than most other sites. In addition to captures, we also collected acoustic recordings at several sites, documented spotted bats in the wilderness areas. This is a significant document documentation as we know very little about spotted bats in Nevada. While these bat blitzes are a tremendous uh, amount of work, uh, or tremendous work for the area biologists. They provide crucial information on areas in the state that we typically know little about. The bat blitz for 2017 is tentatively planned for central Nevada and you all are invited. Uh, fall shorebird surveys were conducted in the Lahontan Valley on the 1st of September. Carson Lake held about 500 acres of water in the big water unit and 600 acres in the rice unit this summer. Most of the surface area in these two units was covered in cattails and there was insufficient water to launch an airboat for the survey. Therefore, the shorebirds observed using Carson Lake during the fall survey were very low compared to previous years. Shorebirds prefer mostly open shallow water for foraging during the fall migration. Still water managed uh, water for shorebirds and water bird nesting this summer, which helped mitigate the lack of water available at Carson Lake. Fallon biologists coordinated with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologists to conduct yellow-billed cuckoo surveys along the Carson River in the Fort Churchill area during June and July. Yellow-billed cuckoo is listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Uh, at the time of the initial petition in 1999, little was known of the extent of the western population outside of California. Breeding western yellow-billed cuckoos are riparian obligates and currently nest almost exclusively in low to moderate elevation riparian woodlands. Breeding and nesting has been confirmed in the southern region of the state, but not yet in the northern portion of the state. One bird was detected during this summer survey in northern Nevada. However, nesting breeding has not yet been confirmed in this area. The species was also detected on the Walker River uh, in the recent past during the breeding season. Uh, lastly, this summer, diversity was able to hire two biologists to survey for shrews throughout the northern portion of the state. The tally for shrew capture is approaching 40 samples. While that number may sound low, uh, it, it is the most shrews we've ever captured in a single summer as shrews are very difficult to track. In addition, we are attempting to live capture and release rather than pitfall uh, as that results in mortalities. Since population stability and status is very uncertain in these species, we're testing trapping methods that will decrease unintentional mortality. There are eight species of shrews in Nevada, and several species are extremely difficult to distinguish in the field. Subsequently, genetic samples were collected on all individuals and have been sent to the University of Idaho for genetic identification. And that con concludes the department activity report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Rosley. Well done.
We'll move on to uh, item 12B, litigation report, Deputy Attorney General Harry Ward. The status report on litigation will be provided. May I please? Harry Ward, Deputy Attorney General. Um, I've submitted a status report and I would, any questions I am available. There are no questions from the commission. I guess you're off the hook. Thank you, sir. <laughs> We'll move on to item number 13, Nevada Department of Wildlife Project Updates. Secretary Tony Wasley, the commission has requested that the department provide regular project updates for the ongoing projects and programs as appropriate based on geography and timing of meetings. These updates are intended to provide detail in addition to summaries <coughs> provided as part of the regular department report and are intended to inform the commission and public as to the department's ongoing duties and responsibilities. And my understanding.